There is Managu, there is Dodo, Managu. there is Saga. Which one is the most popular? Kunde? Yeah, the mm. most popular is Dodo, Dodo. Managu, yeah. Nakudo. When we met her at her store in Seattle City in the U.S. in December 2021, Lucy Kinyanjui indicated that her dream was to go big in offering consultancy services to Kenyan exporters keen on venturing into the U.S. market. I decided why can't I bring Kenya to the U.S.? You know, because I knew there was a gap. I, I knew it was very difficult to get things, you know, uh, from Kenya to here. And also, why can't we also promote our country in this country? And the dream has come true following the successful registration and approval of her consultancy firm in the U.S. My consultancy will be assisting all training companies and individuals who want to export their product to the U.S. in terms of compliance with food, American Food and Drug Administration. That is a body that actually regulates all food products, both in the U.S. and products entering to the U.S. There's also marketing intelligence, so I'll be helping the small businesses or, you know, the big companies access the market in the U.S. And that one, I work very close with a company called American Global Market. They are the ones who help to ensure that the products enter the U.S. market. I'll also be training the companies here in Kenya on what the Food and Drug Administration expects because the packaging has to be this way. They have steps that they look at you know, the packaging and the language that is used has to be in compliance with the American market. So that is actually a challenging because some products have to, to be repackaged all over again. Just to re-emphasize, any product imported into the U.S. market must adhere to regulations of the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. FDA is responsible for protecting the public health by ensuring the safety of the nation's food supply, among other services. The requirements affect areas like nutritional facts, packaging, and labeling. That one is a key thing. That's what the FDA looks for, the labeling, because what happened is, even in the U.S., the labeling was different, and the U.S. government felt that companies were putting very tiny numbers on, you know, like calories and sugar levels, so people don't see them. The calorie has to be in bold. It has to be big numbers and bold. And we don't have in Kenya that technology to come up with that type of labeling. And that is where now my company or my consultancy firm will actually help people to understand. Because I had a lot of challenges with some of the products because the companies couldn't even understand what, what I'm talking about in terms of the rebooting. There are two things that a company can do. A company will give the ingredients, a list of the ingredients in that product. So if you don't give the ingredients, then you have to go through two steps. You have to go through steps of taking the, the product to the laboratory for chemical analysis. Then from that analysis is uh, where the expert will come up with the appropriate food labeling. But if a company wants to give the list of ingredients, then the product doesn't have to go to the laboratory. It can go direct to the food labeling expert. Then with those list of ingredients, they'll be able to uh, come up with, you know, number of calories, number of carbohydrates and all that. The timing of Lucy's consultancy couldn't be better. She says the U.S. market is ripe for African products. The U.S. is into healthy foods right now. And uh, of course, you know, U.S. doesn't grow some of those things. So they are looking to source in, um, you know, African countries like Kenya. And so they are looking at healthy snacks, black beans, the rice, you know, all those products and juices, healthy juices, because we produce really organic products here. So that's why they are really interested. In. And the market is there. And I work with the company, it's called um, Global Marketing. So that company is based in uh, New York and they actually help companies from, you know, from Africa to get market because my company is not just going to focus on marketing for the Africans in the U.S. 
it is going to be a, you know, a U.S. market. That, that's why they have to meet all the regulations because it's a U.S. market, not you know, just exporting to the Af Africans in the U.S. Lucy, who hails from Gatundu in Kiambu, Kenya, has been distributing and selling Kenyan products in the U.S. for the last five years. Her enterprise is known as Lukinya International, located in Kent, Seattle City, in Washington State. She also has a store selling American products at her Nairobi branch at Upperwood Adams along Gong Road. I actually send import products from Kenya to the U.S. and those are mainly in food products and apparel like clothing and accessories. Um, I also do a lot of wholesale, especially with the food products in the U.S. And most of the products that I import um, from Kenya to the U.S., um, like beans, black beans, dangos, you know, all types of bean, rice, bishori rice. And I have a contract with um, Spice World, which actually you know, manufactures beans, black beans, butterfly. Those are mainly the things that I sell in the U.S., both in um, retail and uh, wholesale. But it has not been easy for Lucy. She has had her own share of challenges. For example, she had to go back to the drawing board when regulations about labeling of products were changed. So I had had to do things backwards because already the products, by the time the products got to the U.S., the rule had already taken place. So we started doing the backwards and this was very, very challenging because one thing, FDA will not tell you what to do. So I had to Google, I had to call companies and, uh, you know, figure out. There's what they call recordationing. So what they can do for you, they can give you chances, only two chances to bring the products into compliance. And if you don't do that in those two chances, then they reject the, the product. So you either have the product come back to Kenya or they're destroyed. So I think after going through this, that's when I discovered that I need to, um, because I learned a lot and I learned it just by myself. And that's why I've decided to launch the consultancy firm, at least to help Kenyan companies and small businesses who want to export you know, the, uh, you know, their products to the U.S. to make sure that the product is in compliance by the time it gets to the U.S., otherwise they will not. And the minute that you don't do what you're supposed to do, they put you on red flag, so you can, never, uh, you can never export that product at all, at all. It is against this background that Lucy decided to start a consultancy firm to educate Kenyan exporters on the new regulations in the U.S. I've realized there are so many small businesses that have been given grants to start maybe manufacturing and all that, but they have done it the Kenyan way and now they want to export to the U.S. So they have to go backwards and actually do a whole manufacturing and um, labeling requirement. So it becomes very expensive, you know, for them. So through my agency, I'll be able to help them right from the word go. I have what is called by FDA export verification. So they have given me that, you know, certification that like the companies that have already helped to come into compliance, I have to come and inspect their factory every two years and write a report. So they have to actually meet all the standard. Lucy is already consulting for a good number of Kenyan companies and some have complied. We have uh, Unga Limited. I'm the official agent in the U.S. That's Unga Limited for their flower. I also have Pice World is the one that manufactures all the beans and the rice. And they are also in compliance with all uh, regulations in the U.S. And also uh, maize food that manufactures or sells dried vegetables so all those are also in compliance and we for all of them we had to do backwards because we already had the products in in the u.s by the time the rule came out so the u.s government gave me chances to actually what they call reconditioning the products so i successfully was able to recondition them so they are okay to sell the products <laughs> 